Red Matter 2 is a quality VR adventure puzzle game in presentation and interaction. It does what I hope every other VR game would do as standard. It translates our input freedom into natural, intuitive, elegant, and creative ways which take wonderful advantage of the medium. I wouldn't want to spoil these interactions, as one of the big joys playing through this is the refreshing realization that these devs get it. But I feel there is an important message here about VR development that needs to be stressed. Again, consider this an upcoming spoiler warning for some of the game's cool interactions, but not the story. Before spoiling some of those cool interactions, the short of my feelings about the game is that it's well worth purchase at full price. The visual fidelity and artistic stability is gorgeous on PC, on par with Half-Life Alex, perhaps even better in some ways, and it's very well optimized for the most part. The actual gameplay is quite simplistic in nature, the pacing is decent, and progression is very linear. Perhaps most importantly though, it's one of those rare few VR games that is so competently put together in every aspect that you actually feel like you're really there sometimes, with some scenes bordering on photorealism thanks to the fantastic lighting and textures. If you like what you hear and see so far, and wanted to retain some joyful discoveries for yourself, then go buy. Support this quality and send a message to other devs that we will reward this standard of quality and we want more of it expanded as a base minimum for all of VR. Now, skip to this timecode if you want to avoid spoilers. So these interactions I feel need highlighting because the details are so vital, yet so many devs do not bother to care, which is holding VR advancement back. Interacting with objects in Red Matter 2 has excellent attention to detail. Rather than hand poses, your avatar holds controller devices with retractable claws that dynamically and convincingly wrap around to grip the collision shape of an object. This is accompanied with a two-stage light effect emanating from the claws that both communicates intent and result in the natural, immersive way VR is made for. This is then punctuated by those lights reflecting off the textures and shaders in a very convincing and pleasing way, which adds a feeling of depth that can only be understood when you're viewing it through a headset. To speak of the physics, the mass of objects behave mostly as expected when held or moved and always felt particularly stable and believable. These are massively vital things for VR interactions that should have been the absolute basic norm for a while now, but yet most devs, you know who you are, Timmy, continue to horribly neglect. Even though it's been proven for many years that these things can be done well and performantly, it cannot be understated how much these basic details matter when you're in the world. Seeing this on a 2D monitor doesn't communicate how much of a difference these seemingly innocuous details to interactivity makes, especially to those who have never tried full VR before and are probably raising an eyebrow at the fuss I'm making. But I promise you, consciously or unconsciously, it enhances your experience so much. In most other VR games I've played, the use of computer terminals or monitors or screens or buttons is implemented in the same ill-fitting, unengaging and boring way. The default laser pointer from your controller to a floating button. Because apparently most VR devs at the moment are so creatively void that they cannot conceive of anything other than emulating a mouse cursor no matter what's available to them. Even Steam VR menus are still hamstrung by laser pointers. This sucks. Red Matter 2 does this only for its main menu, which is quite strange in retrospect, but thankfully in actual gameplay things are far more interesting and creative. Observe. No laser pointers, thematically appropriate, creative, and immersive. This philosophy is how it should be done as the norm. It adds so much to the overall experience and feeling while in the headset, especially when the accompanying details are all given appropriate care. 
The texture details, the little sound effects, even down to the physics of the elastic cord and the rotating part it connects to, all adds so much. The cherry on top of this is the fantastic implementation of dynamic lighting and shadows that beautifully interact with the textures in the environments. If there is one thing playing through Red Matter 2 has reaffirmed for me, it's that stable and sharp lighting and shadows and physics are super effective for deeply enhancing your sense of presence and immersion in VR, regardless of the art style. These kinds of visual effects and physics are nothing new or groundbreaking, mind you. We've been using them to great effect since the early 2000s of gaming. Halo, Fear, Doom, Left 4 Dead, to name a few, all managed these effects fine and often better than what we get today, with hardware exponentially less powerful than what we have today. We were progressing with this technology really, really well, but then we just stopped. The Western games industry, for whatever reason, moved away from advancing dynamic performant visuals to the point that now we've seemed to regress in our ability to produce them in modern day rendering without serious performance costs or caveats. At least, this is how I've seen things happen as a user who has lived through these times. Regardless, it's great to see some devs emerge again who know the importance of the details I've stressed, considering how much tangibility and elevation it adds to their game. For the inevitable upcoming revolution of VR to gain more momentum, I feel that revisiting these older techniques of lighting and physics systems that we used to do so well could be very important. Red Matter 2 is an important game for VR. It serves as a reminder that a creative, solid, stable, dynamic, visual and mechanical core experience is absolutely in the realm of possibility for even a small team of devs, if they know what they're doing. And we can have these things and more without the ridiculous, unjustifiable, nonsensical performance costs that are relatively asked of today's very powerful hardware which isn't helped any further by players and devs today who keep making self-sabotaging excuses for what ultimately amounts to bad quality programming being normalized. It's tantalizing to imagine what kind of game could be made with this quality on a larger and even more mechanically dynamic and complex scale, given the right team and budget. I want to read you a short paragraph written on the dev team's website that succinctly encapsulates their philosophy and explains why this game is the way it is, which I sincerely hope you too will find very agreeable and healthy. Quote, we are a tight-knit group of industry veterans who decided to start our own indie studio together. We have worked on titles such as Castlevania Lords of Shadow Saga, Spec Ops, The Line, among many others. We chose to dive headfirst into the exciting adventure that is VR development and strive to create quality games that add value to VR and push the artistic, technical and creative boundaries of the platform." Unquote. I think they've succeeded in manifesting this great attitude into a game and we all definitely want to support this attitude for VR. So as players and consumers, we need to recognize, encourage and reward this quality and integrity by sending a message with our purchase choices. Do not forget, dear viewer, that without us, these industries and those in it are nothing. We dictate the conditions, we set the status quo, and by coming together in our shared passions and rekindling respect for ourselves and the quality of our arts to then foster that quality we want to see, we can absolutely make that happen with our choices. We are the vanguards of our industries and society. Nothing and no one else. Come together. Send a message. Go support these devs. Reward them as they deserve for their integrity and skill. Let quality, principle and standards thrive once again by combining together with each of our individual actions.